Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us for this new series of podcasts for the Goodwood Road and Racing website here at the Rolex Drivers' Mess at the 2016 Goodwood Revival. Jean, thank you so much for joining us. This is fantastic to see you uh, again at Goodwood. We must really start by talking about your son, though, because this is, this is very exciting news. Tell us how this all happened. So, first of all, I'm very happy and pleased to be here in Goodwood because it's an amazing place. And, um, yes, talking about my son, uh, obviously, you know, he grew up in a, an environment of uh, motorsport. Yeah. Not only because he... Uh, uh, there is a Formula One in the in the in the uh, in, in the lobby, uh, not in the lobby, in the entrance of the of the house. But because my friends are drivers, yeah. my friends are also team managers. So if I was not driving, he was watching or, or looking for uh, my friends uh, racing. Sure. And uh, slowly, uh, when he was um, ten years old, he said, uh, "Papa, I want to drive." I said, "Okay." Uh, normal, but uh, let's wait a little bit. I prefer to wait until you are at least 13 years old, because uh, I'm, I disagree, you know, for the kids who start too early, because they don't have the, uh, the life, the, life the, 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 the child, child life, you know, yeah. and uh, uh, of course, you know, when you start to be a racer in karting, uh, you need to bring the results. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to uh, to wait a bit. But now he's uh, in GP3. He's uh, 16 years old and so he yeah. starts his life. Yeah. It's so young, so young compared to your generation, isn't it? It is. Uh, of course, the the changing uh, from my time to now uh, came because uh, the federation accepts the, the 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 kids to race when they are 15 years old. Yeah. So of course everything start from uh, uh, earlier. I mean, uh, you need to do in karting uh, quite young and uh, and drive at least when you are 15 years old. So uh, Giuliano did uh, the Formula 4 in France when he was uh, 15 mm -hmm. and uh, now this uh, GP3. This is a fantastic opportunity, isn't it? With Ferrari, because we're talking about a really uh, proper ladder. Jackie Stewart used to call it the staircase of talent. Yeah, uh, Ferrari uh, have a, a fantastic platform. They call the FDA, which is a Ferrari Driver Academy. Uh, they uh, have uh, three drivers. Uh, two of them are experienced, uh, and uh, one, which is my son, is uh, a beginner. And uh, uh, actually, they uh, they decide to uh, to take him because they uh, they they have seen immediately. Uh, a, a good sign because he won uh, his first race when he <laughs> when he raced in France, and uh, they said, "Okay, let's uh, let's try and uh, bring uh, all our know-how to uh, building up uh, um, uh, a driver." Yeah. What is most exciting for us and for the fans is a lazy Ferrari. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, my life and my heart uh, always uh, have been uh, linked with uh, Ferrari. Uh, I appreciate very much uh, the teams I, uh, I, I, I race with, but of course, you know, the atmosphere in, uh, in Ferrari are so different. Uh, they, uh, the passion is there everywhere. Yeah. And when you are uh, a passionate driver, uh, a driver like I am, yeah. uh, of course, you, you can do good. If I, if I can say so, this is one of the things that people just loved about Jean Alesi, was the passion, the emotion, a real human being. Um, do you think in some ways, if you'd had less of that, you would have been more successful? Uh, you know, um, to create uh, the perfect driver, you have to take part of yes. uh, many drivers. <laughs> uh, I am like that. I had a good time like that, and I think uh, the fan as well, because uh, my mistake or my uh, enthusiasm sometimes was a part of the uh, uh, history of uh, the Grand Prix uh, I, I, I did. So, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I'm, I'm happy I'm uh, like I am. Sure. If we can go back a little way, actually to 1989, to why you're with Eddie Jordan, a big character, 
and you win the Formula 3000 championship ahead of Eric Coma because you had more wins. Tell me about working with Eddie and this was your big this was a big year for you because next is Formula 1. To be um, a Formula 1 driver, I mean to be successful you need to have some luck. And uh, the first luck I had uh, in my career was to meet Eddie Jordan. <laughs> Unbelievable what he did for me. Uh, he uh, he took me in his house. Uh, he he grew. I grew for one year uh, with his kids, yeah. and um, the 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 souvenir I have from uh, this moment will be uh, in my head forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, he had a very uh, competitive uh, uh, team, yeah. but in the meantime, he was also looking after the drivers to uh, to give them the opportunity to go. Uh, up, and it's what he did w with me and uh, Ken Tyrell to to do my uh, first Grand Prix in July. In a way, it was like a, a sort of mini academy, the Eddie Jordan team, wasn't it? It was, uh, uh, yes, an academy in a way, but uh, linked to the, East, uh, the, the time, so it was um, t 25 years ago, and uh, <laughs> of course, uh, we were not calling that academy because... Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> If now uh, we say, okay, Eddie Jordan is a, a head of an academy, everybody will love because he's uh, so different than everybody else, you know. But uh, he was uh, amazing. He was really great. That year, 1989, that was your first Grand Prix. And it was with Tyrrell in France, the French Grand Prix. And again, now you're with a British team and a very strong team. And again, a man like Ken Tyrrell, a wonderful, wonderful man for a, for a young racing driver. Yeah, you know, um, Ken uh, was an iconic uh, uh, honor, uh, team honor. And uh, of course, you know, when I uh, start with him, I was uh, just thinking of uh, making good results and making uh, the job down. Uh, but, uh, you know, I finished fourth for, uh, P4 after the first race. Yeah. And uh, I had a contract only for one race. So then I stayed with him for the end of the championship yeah. plus the following season. Yeah. And I had so much uh, good moments with him. He gave me all the confidence Then I carry on my career because he gave me this uh, uh, always uh, uh, impression of, uh, yes, uh, try, don't over push, mm -hmm. don't make... Uh, uh, make your own mistake you know he was always giving uh, a lot of confidence to me and uh, that was a part of my uh, results well you had a great gift for car control I think everybody always remembers your whether it's raining or it's sunshine you had this was that, is that just a natural gift you had I think so because I okay you can walk uh, on it but uh, uh, I always, you know, enjoy when the car was sliding. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. of course, he helped me a lot, and uh, it was not uh, related related to the speed, because um, when I was kid, I was uh, doing uh, ice uh, driving. Yeah. But the speed was very low. But when in Monza it's raining or in <laughs> Silverstone and uh, the car was sliding uh, over uh, <laughs> 200 miles per hour, I was uh, still laughing, you know. It was amazing because in 91, you're with Scuderia Ferrari. I mean, what a, what a dream. And not only that, but you're with Alain Prost. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, everything went very fast. Uh, and uh, the, the, the time, I mean, uh, was uh, crazy because uh, from, from one year to the other one, I, 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 I was driving for Ferrari and I always dream uh, not to be a driver of Ferrari, but I was dreaming just to watch them, the car f from close, and s uh, fr from uh, and suddenly I've been for for them for five years, and uh, it's, it really is nice. Can you can you just tell me a little bit about life with Ferrari in the 1990s? Because there it was still then a very Italian team, not so many English people, German people working working in the team. It, you know, there was pasta at lunchtime, and tell me a bit about life at Ferrari. So, 
everything was uh, you know I was living in south of France and uh, when I, I was going to uh, to Italy to Maranello the the f the moment you start to understand you are a Ferrari driver was uh, at the custom in uh, Ventimiglia when the police uh, stop you and they ask you to make a burnout so then you understand you are a Ferrari driver then uh, when uh, you stop for the um, uh, the uh, the peage to pay the the guy was saying no it's uh, the company who offer you so, uh, and they, that was like that you know you had this kind of uh, message non-stop uh, of uh, being lucky i mean to be an an, uh, an icon because yeah. you were driving for ferrari yeah and there i mean uh, the house of enzo ferrari everything was authentic and uh, yeah. and the history is everywhere you know the, there is good and bad with this the, the good is as you say the bad is the media the newspapers in italy because every single lap that you do is yeah but you know uh, it's a part of it and you have to accept it uh, i remember when i was testing in uh, uh, imola uh, after the um, when uh, we had the, the checking flag i had to do a uh, a 360 on the front of the tribune to make everybody happy. The the pit the guy on the pit board has to show the lap time to me, but also to the to the grandstand. So it was a kind of um, uh, habit, and uh, it was a national team, you know. And uh, when the press every day has to explain or, or to read or to to read something about uh, the, the, the 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 team and the, the drivers. Sometimes they have to read bad and uh, to write bad, sorry, and uh, you have to accept it. Tell me a little bit about working with Alain Prost. In the time was uh, great because uh, it was my second season in Formula One and he was um, already three times world champion. Uh, Alain was uh, called at the time the professor and then I understand why. He was not hiding anything but he had the capacity to uh, to be uh, quick at the right moment and always building uh, his car to be comfortable during the whole Grand Prix uh, and that was his force. Yeah. Was it because I think it's fair to say that y you have so much talent I mean it's like it's like for you it's just natural but he had more technical uh, intelligence more technical information so did you learn things from Ella? I learned it, but you know the character, uh, you, you cannot, you know the first things I, 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 I did when I arrived in Ferrari, I said, okay, I'd like to have the setup of the car exactly like Alain wants. And when I drove the car, uh, I feel so, uh, uh, no emotion at all, you know. The, the car was uh, easy, and so um, I'm not stupid, I don't want to, to have a, a difficult car to be uh, competitive, but you know, it was uh, killing a little bit my, uh, my, 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 my feeling and, uh, sure. and slowly I started to change the car as I wanted, but that was a, a first message, you know. The car, at the time, uh, we were starting the race with 200 kilo of fuel um, and slowly the car was lighter and then we had to change the tires yeah. at one stage. He had always a good car for the end of the Grand Prix and... Um, and that was, uh, you know, uh, is uh, the, the why uh, even with uh, Ayrton Senna, uh, it was better. Because you, you liked a bit of oversteer, didn't you? Yeah, I wanted to have a, <laughs> what we call a positive car, which is a, a very, uh, um, the, the very front end, a very good front end, yeah. and a very comfortable, not comfortable, but very uh, strong on braking also, you know, because stabi stable on braking and... Yeah. Uh, if the car then was a bit sliding, it was not a problem, but it was a problem for the tires. <laughs> yes. 1993, you're with Gerhard Berger. And for, for me, this is the most memorable year. You and Gerhard, I mean, uh, you had some fun there, I think. Yeah, I had, a, I, I had a good time. Because fun, you know, not really because we were fighting to bring <laughs> back the results to the Scuderia. The cars at the time was uh, not uh, very uh, re reliable, right. but 
Gerard was a, t- a tough worker. Uh, he was uh, still uh, shocked by his time with Ayrton Senna because he was, uh, <laughs> yes. uh, of course, you know, uh, with uh, the best driver. And uh, he thought maybe with Jean it's going to be easier. And uh, mm-hmm. he had a tough uh, uh, money back o- on me, but uh, really loyal. I love Gerard. We, we spent then five years together because three in Ferrari and two in Benetton. And he's a really good time, a good, good friend of mine. When I spoke to Gerhardt about it, and he told me that Senna showed him how to drive, he showed Senna how to laugh. <laughs> Can you? Yes, yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, uh, it, it was, um, you know, the, the generation, uh, uh, the 90s w- was for, for us better than now, because now the, the kids, I mean, the kids, the driver, they, they have no chance to, uh, to do what we have done without being on the front of the magazine or the, or the yeah. newspaper, uh, we, we had more freedom to be uh, a bit crazier. Yeah. Now we're going to come to 1995. <laughs> and this is something that none of us will ever forget. Canada. Yeah, me too, of course. <laughs> you know, 95, I had a very good car. Uh, and um, I, uh, I supposed to win three, I mean, F- four races and uh, I won only one so that was okay but this season the car was uh, very competitive but very fragile we uh, we stopped many times uh, leading the race and that was a shame I've got to ask you when you t- you took the flag and you throw the helmet it must have been such <laughs> it must have been such a great thing to do you know uh, what is important is uh, sometimes to uh, give as much as you have on you uh, to the fans who support you during a race. Uh, I was uh, I was uh, out of my car. I had all the the the, the grandstand uh, sharing my uh, my win. I didn't know what to do, you know, because I was so happy. I so I said, okay, I give my helmet. <laughs> but you just threw it into the crowd. Yes, sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Not only once, I did it then uh, two or three other times. And did, did you ever, later on, did you wish you still had that helmet? No, but uh, you know, um, three years ago I landed in um, Montreal and a, a, a guy came to me and said, um, I was the guy who, who had your helmet. So I said, oh yes, stay with me. And we, uh, I had a picture of him actually. <laughs> Lucky man. Yes. <laughs> The year after that, you're back with Gerhard, but this time at Benetton. Very different team, and again, not a great time to be... Uh yeah, I, w- I have to admit we are, we are a bit unlucky, because when we moved to Benetton, it was um, the team to be. Uh, with uh, Rory Byrne, Ross Brown, yeah. a very uh, competitive uh, technical staff. But we, uh, we had uh, only a few months to stay with them because they moved to Ferrari and uh, that was uh, uh, the most difficult t- time because um, for us because of course the fan recognize a winning car with the color of the car and uh, <laughs> uh, suddenly we arrived and we were not uh, successful anymore and that was uh, difficult but again you know um, the people I work with in, uh, in Benetton was um, very passio- passionate, like in Ferrari, and uh, very sad of uh, the incap- incap- uh, no, not the capacity to uh, to give technically something uh, better. Yeah, yeah. But uh, very nice people. What about Mr. Briatore? It was not his business, you know. And uh, the, the the problem was that he uh, he was uh, making out of uh, motorsport just money yeah. and um, and uh, looking and uh, and using the, the this uh, machine yeah. for being a, Business. a famous face can i ask you at this point in uh, so we're talking sort of 90 coming into 97 still with benetton and then you're going to go to sauber at this point are you thinking you should have won many more races? I mean, it seems quite strange that doesn't... Yeah, but you know, again, you, you cannot uh, live on the, the regret. No. 
Uh, I had a very exciting uh, life, and uh, I keep it like that. Okay. Um, if I may, I'd like to c come to 2000, um, because you went to Alain Prost's team. Um, wh wh why did you, how did that happen? Why did you do that? Because, uh, you know, it was at the end of my career. I'm a very uh, uh, close friend of Alain, and I really wanted to, uh, to make my... Uh, to, to finish my career winning with, uh, with Alain. That was my dream. Unfortunately, we, it, it didn't happen, but uh, he tried and, and I tried. I'm sure, of course, of course. Was that a difficult time for both of you, though? Because it, it we, we had a, a very uh, bad surprise with, uh, with the Peugeot engine. Yeah. They, uh, they didn't really work for... Uh, being uh, competitive, I mean, it was unbelievable. We had so much uh, trouble with uh, uh, little details who makes uh, the, the, the car stopping non-stop. Also, Alain was trying to be a, a team leader, a team, a businessman, and then... Yeah, but it, it was not really his fault, honestly. I mean, uh, okay. the situation sometimes looks from outside on the way. Ah. Uh, he has all the responsibility, but... Uh, it was not really help, you know. Also, you s the sponsorship for the first year, they uh, they support, and then when everything went wrong, they everybody disappeared, and he was alone. It was very difficult for him. It was sad, sad, sad. So, what actually did happen was that you s you finished where you started. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> with with Eddie, uh, it was um, a very good uh, ending because uh, he said immediately to me, "Look, I." I can uh, take you for the end of the season, but we uh, uh, we have a, a very strong influence from Honda to have a Japanese driver. So I have already one driver signed, and if Honda wants to have the, the Japanese driving, you should uh, you will have to l to stop. And they say, okay, no problem. So what was it like that last year in in Formula One? It was great because uh, uh, Eddie had, uh, of course. Um, 15 years more uh, he was 15 years older than when i left him yeah. and uh, he had a formula one team because when i was driving for him he had the only the 3000 team yeah, sure. and you know i um, i appreciate uh, him a, a lot and uh, of course he he was uh, for me uh, a part of the family yeah. what was your what was your best time because it, you it's a very long career an incredibly long career actually if you look back, what, what was the, the best time for you? Honestly, uh, with Tyrell. Uh, because, you know, of course, I was doing Formula 3000, and when I joined Ken Tyrell, it was a, a kind of an, an achievement to be in Formula 1. And, uh, and then the, the results immediately there. Yeah. Everybody was happy. It was really great. Because when I moved to Ferrari, of course, it was a dream. Of course, uh, it was um, fantastic, but uh, you should, uh, you had to be competitive. And uh, if you had a, a problem like we had uh, straight away, nobody uh, cares about if you are <laughs> young, old, quick or not quick. They just want the results, and uh, and there there is so much pressure, you know. Also, when you were at Tyrrell, they were they were good cars. You had good. Of course, uh, the car was fantastic. I mean, for my first Grand Prix. Uh, middle of the Grand Prix, I was uh, in second position. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amazing. Well, everybody was very excited, uh, as you were. Yeah, me know. too, me yes. too. Because you know, when I when I saw on the pit board P2, uh, I thought it was for somebody else, <laughs> and then okay, I finished P4, but uh, you know, it was a good result. What was the worst time? The worst time was '94, really? because um, uh, I started the championship. I finished third in uh, in Brazil. And uh, the second race, um, uh, in between the, the first and second race, we had a, a testing in Mugello and a crash. Uh, I broke my yes. spine and I was not able to do two races. So I was um, uh, not racing. And uh, one of the two races was uh, Imola, when Ayrton died. And that was uh, probably the worst ever uh, time I had because uh, being uh, injured, not be able to race, 
and on the meantime watching uh, um, the hero of the moment being uh, killed that was very difficult yeah, yeah. did you ever think you might stop right there right then no no because uh, um, you don't think I mean I'm, I was not thinking like that I just uh, I just realized how uh, dangerous was our uh, yeah. uh, sport but I was not thinking of uh, stopping I, I want to ask you very quickly, you went to DTM, why did you do that? Because you... Uh, so, you know, I mean, I, I was, uh, I explained the story, you know. Uh, when I announced uh, my uh, retirement in uh, Japan, um, on Friday, I, uh, that was in Tokyo on the Wednesday. W on the Thursday night when I arrived to uh, Suzuka, Norbert Haug, uh, who was in charge of Mercedes-Benz, uh, came to me and said, why you are not uh, uh, thinking of DTM? I said, come on, I don't care about the DTM, you know. And, uh, and he said, no, you should uh, have a look. And I didn't take it as uh, really seriously. And um, on the week uh, after the, the Japan, when I was home, he called me and said, I prepare a test for you ne next week. I said, okay, no, but I come. So I went there, but I was really not thinking of racing. And when, when I drove the car, when I see the, the level of, uh, not technology, because uh, the, the cars are very simple, yeah. the car I drove. And, uh, but the professionality of, uh, uh, of Mercedes-Benz, I, I said, okay, why not? And for five years, I, I yeah. did the DTM, and I have a very good time, because they treat me like a hero. Yeah. I was in the middle of the fan. Where, uh, which is what I like. So, um, very good time. I won uh, four races. I mean, a very good time. I wondered if it was because you just love driving. So. Uh, and of course I love driving, but uh, you know, everything together <laughs> make it, make the things happen. Sure. Okay. Um, can I ask you, one? I, w I often wondered, what when I was watching you race, I wondered if you'd ever thought about becoming a rally driver and I, I can I just tell you why because of your car control <laughs> yeah but it's so different you know I try uh, once uh, to do the rally du Var in France and uh, I didn't feel comfortable because the car control on the racetrack you you can really have a chance to uh, um, to do it on on the road it's so it's changing so much the the, the place you go, um, I was uh, maybe too much using the limit of the, the, the car and uh, I will be not able to be a, a rally driver for sure. Really? I'm surprised. I'm really surprised. Okay. To finish, uh, let's return quickly to your son because um, what are your hopes? Are you, I mean, it's when you're a racing father, are you ambitious for him or are you patient for him? Or? He is 16, you know, so you, you imagine uh, how uh, sh shocked I am to speak about um, um, uh, racing with him because uh, I always see him as a, as a kid, you know. But uh, of course, you know, he grew up in this environment, he wants to be a driver and I will support him. The only things I do for him to really support, uh, I bought um, uh, Ariel at home, okay, and I drive with him. He show me what he do. I show I show him what I do, yeah. and uh, like that, uh, we have a very good um, uh, respect each other, because I, he's doing things that he surprised me already. But uh, sometimes when uh, uh, I want to uh, to calm uh, to calm him, I show him what I can do, still, and uh, it's very funny. <laughs> I went to a kart race in Italy a few months ago. And I have never seen so many little drivers, like 200 drivers, and the, my, it's so competitive. So he, he's done incredibly well, hasn't he, to get into that academy. I mean, the every Italian boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But it's what he did anyway. For when he did his two years of karting, I brought him to this place in uh, the, this championship called WSK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's... Uh, uh, really a bunch of lions uh, together and uh, very good for the character. Absolutely, yeah. So lastly, Goodwood, here we are. Uh, you've been before. Why, why would you want to 
race a historic car? Is it just is it because you can't let it go? No, because you know, uh, well, first of all, um, there is a kind of uh, competitions and kind of uh, historic cars. When you are here, you have really the top of the top in terms of uh, organization, in terms of uh, uh, cars, and um, you know, it's a. Uh, it is a privilege to be here and to have uh, the chance to to drive. So when I've been uh, offered by uh, Charles March to uh, to drive, uh, you ca you cannot say no. Somebody told me that you will only drive here if you drive a Ferrari. Yeah, but that is normal. <laughs> as long as I have the choice, it, it has to be like that. Do you have a Ferrari? Yes, yes. Tell me which ones you have. <laughs> I have a F40 oh. and uh, of course one of my Formula 1. Which one? A 92. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's Thank so you. kind of you. Thank you very much, Jean. Thank you very much. They won it 2010. Here we go. Here we go. A pat on the back oh. from the Guinness. Through they go. <laughs> How close do you want it? A pat on the back. Come on, McPint. Get your finger out. Get Steve, look at this. Look at this. A pat on the back.